Yeah, very good afternoon. Welcome to The Briefing PM with me, Darren McCaffrey. Over the next hour, live from Downing Street, as the political fallout continues from that alleged lockdown breaking party that took place here in Downing Street in May 2020, when the rest of us were being told simply not to mix with uh, people beyond one other outside of our households. Uh, that was clearly not the case in Downing Street when one of the most senior civil servants invited, it seems, over 100 people uh, to attend a party in the Downing Street Garden. It's believed that up to 30 may well have attended, including the Prime Minister and his wife, Carrie Simmons, in flagrant abuse of the rules. It has led to anger in the Labour Party, some of whom are calling for the Prime Minister essentially to go. Anger, too, amongst the Conservative Party. Many backbench MPs privately expressing the frustration that, yet again, here we are with them having to defend a Prime Minister who appears to have broken the rules. And that is also spilled into anger as well amongst the wider Conservative Party. We've heard from a Conservative Council leader in Sunderland, Anthony Mullen, in the last hour or so saying that it is inevitable the Prime Minister will have to go because of this. As for Downing Street though, they are on the defensive arguing that they were going to have to wait for the official reports by Sue Gray into what went on, not just at this party, but the many others that have alleged to have taken place in the first lockdown and also ahead of Christmas in 2020. But let's just remind ourselves of what the rules were back then, because on the same day as this party took place in Downing Street, at which dozens of Downing Street staff, including the Prime Minister's wife, attended, just before that, Oliver Darden, the Cabinet Minister, was inside Number 10, telling us what the rules at that day and that stage were. Let's have a listen. Before we begin questions from the public and from the media, I just want to remind people of the details of the next phase of our fight against coronavirus. As the Prime Minister announced this week, those who cannot work from home should now speak to their employer about going back to work. You can spend time outdoors and exercise as often as you like, and you can meet one person outside your household in an outdoor public place, provided that you stay two metres apart. Well, that was Oliver Darden speaking on that day, on May 20th, back in 2020. Today, though, the Labour Party were demanding answers from the government. They managed to get an urgent question in Parliament. The Prime Minister, unsurprisingly, didn't turn up. Michael Allis, the MP and Paymaster General, stood in instead. And it was a pretty angry exchange, it must be said, between Angela Rayner, the Deputy Leader of the Labour Party, and Michael Ellis trying, it must be said, to try and defend the government, well, frankly, saying very little. Let's have a watch. The Minister, quite frankly, hides behind the grey investigation. There's no need for an investigation into the simple, central question today. Did the Prime Minister attend the event in the Downing Street Garden on the 20th of May 2020? It won't wash, Mr Speaker, to blame this on a few junior civil servants. The Prime Minister sets the tone. The Prime Minister uh, was, one, uh, was, of course, himself affected by the consequence of a COVID-19 uh, infection. Uh, he takes this matter very seriously, uh, as does everyone in government. But I will say this. She, she asks if I have confidence in the Prime Minister's integrity and honour, and I do. Pretty sticky wicket there for uh, Michael Ellis. What was uh, more notable, rather than the replies, were how few Conservative MPs were sat behind him. In fact, none on the front bench at all. Many pointing out, actually, there were many more people at this party in Downing Street that were in the Commons Chamber uh, to try and give support uh, to that Conservative Minister, trying to defend the Prime Minister. Of course, the Boris Johnson will have to face the music at some stage, most notably when Prime Minister's Question Time is held at lunchtime tomorrow. Well, let's get uh, a sense of what the mood